Hello, my favorite mathematicians, and welcome to 2.3, which is all about proportions. Today, our essential question is, what is a proportion, and how do I find the missing value? Let's go ahead and grab those needed supplies, our writing utensil, our math notebook, a growth mindset, and determination, because we've got not one, but two learning goals to tackle today. We are going to be able, by the end of this video, to say with confidence, I can find the missing value in a proportion, and I can determine if two ratios are proportional. Before we start talking about proportions, let's take a minute and just review about equivalent ratios. Remember, those are two ratios that have the same value. They are equal. So how does that relate to a proportion? Well, a proportion is simply two ratios that are equal to one another. So equivalent ratios and proportions are one and the same. So an example of that, 1 to 2 and 4 to 8, those are equivalent because we know 1 times 4 is 4 and 2 times 4 is 8. So we would say that these ratios are proportional. Are they proportional? That's the question we're going to take a few minutes to practice answering. Let's take a look at this first set of ratios, 2 to 6 and 10 to 3. Well, we can look at this and say, okay, I know that I can say 2 times 5 to get 10, and I can also say 6 times 5 to get 30. Since I multiplied those both by the same number, yes, these are proportional. Let's look at another example. Here we have 22 to 44 and 2 to 4. We can easily say divide by 11 on both of these and see that yes, this is also proportional. Let's take a peek at one more. We've got 24 to 40 and 8 to 5. We know that 24 divided by 3 is 8, but 40 divided by 8 is 5. So since we didn't do the same thing to both quantities, these are not proportional. That's a no. Now, we have a little bit of a problem that we need to discuss. Ratios can be proportional even when you can't multiply or divide like those previous examples. Remember we talked in our last video about simplifying, how there was a third option? Same thing here, we have a third option. Now, you can simplify, but another option, another solution, the method that works every time is to cross multiply. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at another example here. 24 to 40 and 15 to 25. I'm going to cross multiply. So that means I'm going to take the numerator of one and the denominator of the other and multiply. 24 times 25 is 600. Then I will go the other way. 40 times 15 is also 600. Since they both equal the same, that means yes, they are proportional. Let's try that strategy with this set of ratios, 14 to 30 and 28 to 58. 14 times 58 is 812. 30 times 28 is 840. Those are not the same answer, so are they proportional? No, they are not equivalent. And this is the part of the video where you're gonna pause and try the next few problems on your own and then come back and check your answers. All right, so here are your problems and answers. How did you do? Hopefully you got all six of those right. If not, go back and see if you can figure out where you went wrong. Okay, in the last part of this video, we're gonna talk about finding the missing value of a proportion. And so I know these two things are equal. I know it's a proportion, but I'm missing a piece. So one way you can figure out what that missing piece is is to say, well, what did we do to 10 to get 30? We multiplied by three. So I have to do the same thing to four. What do I do to four to get X? I multiply it by three. What is four times three? Yeah, X is 12. You can also do that um, with division, but sometimes it doesn't work. For example, in this one, 12 times what is 30? Well, it's not a whole number. So I'm gonna use a different strategy. So we're gonna take that method away. I'm gonna slide this problem over so we got plenty of room to work. And I'm gonna use my cross multiplication method. I'm gonna do five times 30 
and I'm going to do 12 times x. Well, how do I multiply 12 and a variable, an unknown? I just simply write 12x and know that that means 12 times x. That's going to be set equal to, since I know they are proportions, the answer to 5 times 30, which is 150. Now, I want to show you how to solve these algebraically, and this is how I want to see you solving them in your notes. 12 times something equals 150. To figure out the something, I'm going to do the opposite. I need to get that x all by itself. So I'm going to say 12 divided by 12, which is 1. That leaves me with 1x, which is exactly what I want. Now, that equal sign means it's the same as, so I have to keep things balanced. So if I do something to one side of the equal sign, it's not equal anymore. In order to keep it equal, I have to go do it to the other side. So I'm also going to say 150 divided by 12, which is equal to 12.5. So x equals 12.5. I can now use the cross multiplication method that we just talked about to check my work on that. Let's go ahead and try another example. This time I've got 6 to x and 8 to 18. Yes, the x has moved, but it doesn't change how I solve this. I'm still going to use that cross multiplication method. So 8 times x is simply 8x because I don't know the value of x yet. And that is equal to the product of 6 and 18. So what is 6 times 18? 108. Now I want that x by itself. I'm going to do the opposite, the inverse, to make that happen. 8 times x, the opposite of that would be to divide. So I'm going to divide that by 8. 8 divided by 8 is just 1, which is what I want, 1x. That tips my scale and things aren't balanced anymore. So I have to go do the same thing to the other side. And 108 divided by 8 is equal to 13.5. So in this case, x is 13 and a half. Okay. All right. Go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own and then come back and check your work. All right. Here are the problems you just solved along with the answers. Go ahead and check yourself. Hopefully, again, you got all six right. If you didn't, go back and see if you can figure out what you did wrong, ask questions, but get those right answers. And mathematicians, you've made it to the end of 2.3 proportions. You should now be able to answer the question, what is a proportion and how do I find that missing value? Thank you, Amy Grosbeck, Amanda Newsom, Bricks and Border, and Pixel Garden Designs for your amazing fonts and clip arts. Mathematicians, go forth and be amazing.